what's up people, Dom Swords is right here and welcome to a special episode of the Top 5s. Now we, I was thinking to myself this morning whilst I was playing one of my video games, as you guys know, um, I've been live streaming Daymare, this has been pre-recorded in, in December people, so you guys know how long this was being, being recorded. And whilst I was playing one of my games and something triggered in my head thinking, what is my absolute all time favourite controller that I like using a lot? when it comes to playing video games. So, as you guys know, I have over 14 different actual consoles that actually needs controllers for. So I whittled them all down to my top five. And don't you guys worry, there will be another top five about my most hated controllers that I have to use. So, without being said, this is my top five favorite console controllers. So, the first one I'm going to talk about, my number five spot, is the the SNES. Right here, this is the Nintendo. This is the Super Nintendo controller. It is the most simplest one of all time. This came out in the in the 90s um, during the rivalry against um, the Sega Mega Drive and against the the SNES. But why do I like this controller as much? It's very, very indestructible. I have not broken... I've thrown this contro controller so many, many times in the past. Even when I was a child, and it never broke. It still works to this very day. The buttons are very responsive. And it's super comfy. It's very, very comfy. A lot of people may be thinking, oh, old controllers, they're very, very um, not comfy at all. They're like, they're like um, relics of the past. They're not as good as they are nowadays. I digress, because... It is smooth rounded, so there's no like sharp pointing parts for your hands. It connects to your hand just like this, which is easy. And you got yourself four four buttons on the right side, you got your D-pad on the left, you start and slide in the middle, and then you got yourself the left button and the right bumper at the back. That is it. Nothing insane, nothing extreme, nothing complicated. Of course, there is games out there for the SNES like Mortal Kombat, which you had to do a load of different type of button mashes to do, um, to do fatalities. But if you're playing like normal games like Mario or Legend of Zelda, it was straightforward and it was super enjoyable. And especially, I play this with my Pokemon games on my Game Boy with the Super with the Super Game Boy player, and it works absolutely amazing. And yeah. That's why I can say it's it's super strong, it's doable. There is a lot, a lot of replicas out there that are just like this. And as you guys know, this is a replica one. I do have an official one, but it's buried deep in my controllers. But this is the one I mainly use a lot because my official one is too desirable because it has a serial number on it. And the serial number ones are quite rare. But yeah, very doable. Real love it. It's my number five spot. Number four, we're going to go ahead and talk about this one. The Xbox 360 controller. Now, I really, really do love the 360 controllers. Super resilient, very comfy, very enjoyable. Now, as you guys notice, this one, this is a wired version, which I do not mind at all. I actually prefer the wired one than the wireless because I hate fucking batteries. But yeah, extremely comfy. I hold it like this all day long, as you guys know. Because my left my left thumb always goes around with the D with the actual analog stick and with the D pad very easily. It's very easy to it's very very easy to go for. I have my button. I have two fingered buttons right at the back. That I always hold it like, and then I have my other finger which goes around with the other with the other buttons. But sometimes I actually move my finger to get to the Wi-Fi if I want to do something quick, like Call of Duty, like I usually do back in uh, World at War. And again, you got yourself your start and select button, and of course your home page button right in the middle. Now, how many times have I broken this though? Uh, I have broken three of these controllers in the past, but they've always, always were responsible. I've only broken them because of anger issues and everything. I don't break them anymore. I rarely break anything nowadays. I've, uh, I've conquered my inner anger now by using pillows and uh, my freaky leg, <laughs> to be honest. But... Yeah, it's extremely comfy. It's also the best thing about it as well is that it is a USB um, 
port. So you can actually use these on the PC. So if you guys are massive PC players, forget about the um, Xbox Series or the Xbox One controllers. Don't need them at all. Just get yourself a 360 controller. You're all good to go. Of course, you may want to use the, the, um, the newer generations because they will work more on the newer games. But if you guys have Steam and you want to play old classic games, this is the way to go. This is the one I would 100% recommend. So yeah, number four, it is the Nintendo. It is the um, Xbox 360. Very good, very very good pad. What's number three though? What's uh, what's got bronze? Now what bronze they have? It is the Nintendo Wii controller. It's so freaking enjoyable, and I've never broken one. Ever. And I've thrown this so many times and I've accidentally let go. It comes straight back to me and it always works very well. This is my original one as well. If you guys don't know how do I know that. It's because it has my original Super Smash Bros sticker on it as well. Um, that was nothing because when I first got the Nintendo Wii. I got it on the, year, on the day release of Super Smash Bros Brawl. And I, of course I officialed it. By putting the sticker on my actual controller. I have quite a lot of these controllers elsewhere because I've got myself a blue one, I've got a pink one, I've got the Legend of Zelda one which is super super nice but I do really love to try and get myself the Bowser one and the Princess Peach one, the Mario, the Total, you know the special ones, especially the Lego one, that one looks amazing. But this was the controller where it invented everything that we know nowadays. A speaker on the controller. Now we ha this is the first controller I know of that has a speaker on the controller. So thanks to this, we have the speakers that are on the PlayStation 4, the speakers that are on the PS5, etc, etc. Thanks to this little, little type of model, we've got gaming it is nowadays. And it's the one that was actually, that actually um, perfected the motion control on the TV. So if you guys know back in the PS1 era and the PS2 era, and of course, the Sega Saturn. We had gun rally games where you can't play them nowadays because you need an actual old TV screen. Don't even need it anymore. You got a sensor bar where you just point this out where it wants to go and then boom, you're done. Sally with the Nintendo Switch, they haven't really perfected it, which is a bit of a bummer. They went down a bit. But this was where it all started. You get one and two button here, the plus and minus, home page at the bottom. You got a gun trigger at the back, which is always good when you're shooting things with, with the actual gun. You on and off button here, the decal up here, and the A button that we always use. Best games I use for this game, of course, Resident Evil 4. Dew on the Grudge, when you're using this as the torch, it is freaking good. And, um, of course, Wii Sports. Literally, <laughs> of course, when you're playing tennis or boxing like that, it's awesome. I really enjoy it. It's a fantastic controller. Very durable. You can connect it as well with the nunchuck. So you can use it like use it as two controllers. But as one controller, it's absolutely amazing. It's definitely in my bronze list. Silver. Um, to be honest, it's invented, okay? Because I can actually say it to the whole entire family because they're pretty much all the same. They've just been upgraded as they go along. So that's, this is pretty much all the PlayStation controllers. So you got yourself PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4. Then you have the PS5. And then you have this controller that I've been using since it got released. This is the PlayStation 5 Edge. Now, I'm not saying that this is the all-time best one, but this is the one I use the most now. But... Out of me, because as you guys know, I am a PlayStation fan more than Xbox and Nintendo, but I play them all. But when it comes to controllers, I don't need to map myself at all when it comes to a PlayStation controller, because they're all the same to me. Extremely comfy, it's got a good weight to it, so it doesn't have to be resilient. But what they did with this Edge, now I know that there's people complaining saying this is the worst fucking controller ever. It's got the shittest battery of all time. You could only charge it for an hour and then it depletes in minutes. I have never had a single issue with this game with this controller depleting in battery. 
I probably play around about four hours a day of gaming. This has never ever depleted. And I, when I finish the play, when I finish playing, I put it on charge for an hour, take it off, and then it's ready to play again for the next day. But what I love this though, I know they took the ideas out of Xbox. I know what people say because, of course, you can interchange the um, actual joysticks. You got thumb backs here where you can go ahead and change it. But also, if these start drifting, you can take them actually off and replace them with another one. That is genius. Xbox never did that, which is fantastic. I know you can calculate them to um, it's drifting to stop, but I really enjoy it, and it's perfect for my actual way of playing. And I do like that they have buttons underneath as well, where you can actually change the settings on your PlayStation to go to any type of mapping you want, whether you want to play Call of Duty, a racing game, a horror game, etc., etc. But yeah, the PlayStation Edge, but the whole entire family of PlayStation is my number two spot. But what is number one? Number one, a lot of people may be thinking to myself, what the frig have you put this as number one? But possibly it's because I like how it works and I like how it's been mapped out. Even though a lot of people may call it a Frankenstein controller, I don't think it is. I think it's an absolutely a genius concept of a controller. And that is, from the 90s, the Nintendo 64 controller. Now, a lot of people may be thinking, this thing is awful. I don't think so. Because they've mapped it on how you want to play the game. So, of course, there is RPGs out there on the N64 where you don't use this at all. So, you go ahead and map it like this. And that feels comfy. I really like that. And plus, you've got your fingers then to go ahead and map out where you want to go. Easy. If you're playing something like, um, oh, I don't know, GoldenEye 007, you just go ahead and change your controller to this, and it makes it feel like you're holding a gun, which I like. And the analog stick is very, very sensitive. Okay? Now, I know that a lot of people have updated the N64 controller and made new ones that look absolutely better, but you still cannot beat the original. I know people out there who own shops who can't get their hands on the official ones anymore. Even when they try to buy them off people second hand, they've always kept on getting replicas, fakes, or third party controllers that have no Nintendo on them, and they don't work as really well, but they look like them. But, they can't forget about the OG. Having it, holding it like a gun, I really do love, and there's lots of games that you don't need any of these buttons, but you can play it like that, and it feels like an Atari 2600 game. Like an old Atari console, because you're only using one joystick and the button underneath. I like that. Apologies, people. <laughs> but of course, you do have yourself the very, very, like, let's say, long ass games, adventure games, where you need everything. Like the Legend of Zelda series, so you've got yourself Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time. Of course, that's the way to move. That's to go ahead and map your shortcut items. That's to attack and defend, so that's pretty much how you're going to be working. But then you got all the buttons, of course, you've got the start button and the um, select button that's put together. This is hardly used, okay, in Legend of Zelda. So, that's perfectly fine. You're still holding it like this. You rarely see people play games like this, unless they've somehow they've mapped them. But, for me, how I play the N64 is always like this, like that. Perfect. Love it, it feels comfy. I love how it works. I know that a lot of people may be thinking, but what about that button up there? It is fine. Because I, I can also play like this, too. Because there is other games out there where you can change the settings. Like Super Smash Brothers. You can change the B button to this. Which is fine. Some people can play like that. It feels a bit uncomfy. Fair enough. But I can work my way around that. But how I map it is the block button is the B grade. Moving like that. Grabbing is that. And of course your attacks are here. Super and easy. That 
is my number one controller. I freaking love the N64. Sadly, don't have a very massive collection of them, but you know that are boxed. But I do have a lot of them. Um, just cartridges on loan, and I play them all, and I've finished them all. Um, I am planning on getting some more N64 games in the future, so I can play more of them in, my, in the future, near future. But at the minute, with the N64, I'm only playing like the big, the bog of standard games that I know that I can play and finish very, very quickly, like the Resident Evil, Resident Evil 2. I mean, you got yourself. Um, the Mario Kart, which I love a lot, Smash Bros, of course, and the one I really do love the most, I hate to say it, Conker's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> I play that religiously, people, so if I get bored and I don't want to play any modern games, I go straight onto that because it's super fun and it's addictive. So yeah, that is my top five favourite controllers. You got yourself the SNES, the Xbox 360, the Nintendo Wii, the PlayStation controllers, also known as the Edge, and the N64. Stay tuned soon, people, because I'll be giving you my top five most disliked controllers. Some of you will highly disagree. Some of you may agree. But we'll find out sooner or later. With that being said, the people of Sloop will see you guys subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!